Let's go across the experts to understand in depth why Sri Lanka has come to this state. What are the lessons to be learned from what was once a thriving democracy? We don't know what's going to happen next. Today on the show, I'm joined by Shilkan Sharma. He's former Secretary General of SARC. Uh, Madhuri uh, Rana Singhe, a freelance writer who's joining us uh, from Colombo. Madhuri, thank you for having us, uh, for joining us on the show at a difficult time in your country. Michael Kugelman, he's a South Asia senior associate at the Wilson Center, is also with us on the show. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Madhuri, I'm going to begin by, you know, getting your view on what is happening right now, what the latest situation is, and is there hope now that this violence will temper down or have fears increased for protesters after the latest orders of a shoot at sight order given to the army? Um, honestly, uh, today and before, uh, it was very violent. People uh, torching uh, MPs' house and uh, sabotaging property or making violence on the road. Um, today, we saw a decrease in it. Uh, it didn't happen at large like yesterday because they uh, imposed a curfew, an uh, island-wide curfew yesterday night. So today it was a bit calm. But uh, unfortunately, there were a few incidents that happened uh, around the country in a few cities, which, um, which were apparently uh, minor when compared to yesterday. But uh, it can't be concluded as a um, decreasing because um, today, um, maybe around the, in the evening, um, government imposed another uh, risk, like a, a curfew, not a curfew thing. Um, they commanded the forces to shoot anyone who's uh, sabotaging properties or uh, creating violence on the road. So it is a new development in Sri Lanka. And we fear what will happen. Um, there are peaceful protesters who are residing in Gold Face, Colombo. Um, they have been very peaceful all the time. And uh, I don't know what situation it will be. Uh, so far, the situation has been uh, OK. There were a few incidents, but they were controlled. Um, so we hope it will be peaceful again tomorrow than how it is, uh, how, than how it was yesterday and uh, today. Uh, we hope for the best, actually. Um, yeah. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. You know, today we're focusing on what the role of the Rajapaksa brothers has been and that entire family in what has happened to Sri Lanka. Because it seems to be decades of populism, um, a lot of targeting of ethnic minorities, which has been cheered on by a section of the population. They have been re-elected again and again. Denial of what's going on, which has led to the situation in a way. I want to get in Mr. Shil Khan's um, uh, perspective on this. Sir, do you think it's fair to say that the way the Rajapaksas have had a hegemony on the Sri Lankan political landscape is in large part responsible for what we're seeing today? You know, the hegemony uh, is, is a strong word, but, uh, you know, this kind of unquestioned sway over uh, uh, the polity of Sri Lanka, and uh, that impelled them to take decisions uh, which were totally arbitrary, in uh, flouting the canons of, uh, you know, propriety for the, you know, running an economy of a country. Sri Lanka is, has been always dependent on imports. You know, it doesn't produce anything which it needs. So uh, only tea it produces, which would used to earn its revenue. And tourism was one uh, important, uh, uh, you know, means of revenue. And third was Sri Lankans. Uh, education was very good, so their expatriates were working abroad and they were sending remittances. They were working in the Gulf and, and, and the West. So these were the three, uh, you know, uh, main stays of uh, Sri Lankan economy. Now, all these three have been uh, disrupted by the policies taken by Sri Lankan president uh, and his brother, the prime minister, in the last two, three years. There was a problem in the past, but, uh, the, you know, when you have a problem in a society, Everyone who rules has to be concerned that this look, this is the problem. I should and they should draw red lines. I'm not going to cross these red lines. 
But these people flouted it. These expensive Chinese projects, they are not generated any revenue. And they have landed them into a dead soup. And uh, how do they deal with it? They have unnecessarily incurred these debts. Then they reduced the revenues, which uh, should have been there for the coffers, but they wanted to give uh, you know, some kind of a fashionable rebate to the higher taxpayers. But that doesn't help the economy. Then, you know, this problem is that tourism uh, also uh, flourishes on optics. So these roads and highways and big buildings and skyscrapers, they, they give the image of a country being uh, prosperous. And tourist, tourists flock there. And Sri Lankan beaches are good. So they, they ignored the basic needs of people. They ignored the basic needs of producing or at least ensuring that the imports are there. So all that has now come to roost. Uh, suddenly, the whole uh, uh, you know economy is under deep stress. And this, and then uh, Rajapakche uh, senior has still not uh, till, until yesterday he was still uh, clinging to power and using his own devices. You know this uh, hurling his supporters to have violence with the protesters. Right. It's all, uh, you know his his old fashioned. It's you know. Is he learning it from his newfound friends in China, how to deal with the protests? If that is so, then the shoot and sight orders, uh, it, uh, it's an ominous uh, order. It might be worse in the coming days. So, for God's sake, Sri Lanka is a democratic country. It has had traditions of democracy for the last 75 years, 80 years. And then they have a peaceful transition of power. So they should not, you know, branch into this kind of a violent crackdown on peaceful protesters. Instead, they should focus on how they can relieve their misery, how they can provide for the immediate needs, which is the most, uh, you know, critical problem today. They have to look at ways to provide what is needed by the people and provide them money. You know, in even developed country like the USA, when the pandemic struck, people who in the lower rung who were affected, they were given pay, they were given checks by social security because they had no money to buy provisions. Sri Lanka also has a problem where the people who are in the lower rung of economy, they don't have money to buy the kind of uh, five thousand uh, Sri Lankan rupees which they had, which they suggested once at one time, or maybe two thousand five hundred rupees, but the cost of diesel and food and uh, milk powder has gone up. So they cannot find anything in that money. No, so, so, so they have to come you out. know, the thing to understand today, and, you know, Madhuri, let me come to you on this. Is this because of circumstances that the Rajapaksa government could not do anything about? Because COVID-19 hit the whole world, the Easter Sunday attacks onwards, tourism was hit in Sri Lanka, and then COVID made it worse. Um, you know, crude has gone up massively and all countries that import crude are suffering from that. But is there more to this than these factors which are impacting others? Are the people of Sri Lanka now believing that it is bad economic policies and not allowing people to point out what was going wrong all of this time that has led to the situation? They do. Um, actually, I've understood how... Um... It's not just the COVID, or this is not just the uh, crude oil prices going up. Uh, they've understood there's some uh, economic mismanagement happened through the government side. That's why the hashtag came through, go home, go tough. So people know that this was mismanagement by the Gota Bay government. And to be honest, uh, like the other speaker said, um, they, um, I believe the main reasons, main reasons for um, this economic downfall was uh, mismanagement of the economy, which happened from 2019 to now. And then again, uh, the borrowings they did, especially Mahinda Rajapaksha, when he was a president, he did a lot of borrowings uh, from 2009 to 2015, uh, where they used these funds to uh, build unnecessary, unnecessary um, skyscrapers, 
roads and infrastructure which didn't bring us any dollars and they didn't diversify our export market they just it, it just increased our imports that's about it it increased the consumption of the people um if you if you take the electricity consumption every time it has been increasing so uh nothing nothing was done to reduce the gap between imports and the ex exports um so these uh, on the other hand corruption so this is something that we didn't discuss about there are a lot of allegations towards rajapaksha family about corruption and theft and money laundering a um, lot of um, because uh, if you look at the news the last week uh, one of the party leaders uh, andru kumar disa nayaka revealed a uh, ton like a very very large amount of uh, uh, files and data information about allegations these rajapaksha family has so um, nothing has been proved and there are court cases going on uh this is this is this is the sad situation of sri lanka because they they even control the law and the court court systems they interfere with the court uh, procedures um so most of these cases were not un went unsolved or maybe they were altered um so they, it didn't go through yeah so we don't know you know you know A, a country, a country which does not have the checks and balances required to keep uh, the government in power in place. If they have an unfettered access to what's happening, perhaps those are some of the reasons. Michael Kugelman with us. Michael, great to have you on the show uh, on Beyond the Headlines. There have been peaceful protests for weeks now. Why do you think everything has fallen apart so quickly in the last couple of days? Well, I, mean, I think we have to remember that for a number of months, uh, Sri Lanka has been experiencing uh, exponentially um, some of the most uh, intense economic stress of any country in Asia, and even around the world. I mean, you've had soaring prices, some of the highest inflation in the world uh, in, in Sri Lanka. You've had uh, prices of key commodities in Colombo uh, go up by as much as 30% in recent weeks. So the public had been extremely angry for a long time and had thought that the government was not properly uh, addressing these concerns. And indeed, what we've seen in recent weeks and especially recent days have been um, the government cracking down on the protesters and, and instead of trying to take a conciliatory position, trying to crack down. And that is, in fact, another reason why uh, the protesters have been so angry, because there's a perception among those that don't like the government that the Rajapaksa family, which of course has had such a major role in the current government and in previous ones, has always has tended to use these draconian, heavy-handed tactics against the public, um, that it's been perfectly happy to operate with an iron fist instead of addressing these longstanding economic challenges that the country has, has faced for such a long time. Mr. Shilkant, let's talk about what happens next. The prime minister has stepped down. Uh, people are waiting to see if the president will step down. Um, do you think that that is likely? What are the political alternatives in place and who really is now seemingly willing to come in and take charge of this messy situation. Rajpaksha, Mahindra Rajpaksha has tendered his resignation, but uh, you know one should not be complacent until he leaves. It is not yet known whether his resignation has been accepted. His brother might still uh, you know, try and play a fiddle and uh, get him back in the Indian government, which would be a disaster because he is a strong-headed man. He doesn't believe in... Uh, dissent and uh, diversity of opinion. So uh, that is one thing. The second thing is, yes, uh, uh, you need in Sri Lanka today help and assistance from Sri Lanka's friends, the group of friends who all, you know, who have a goodwill for Sri Lanka, like India, for instance, has abundant good goodwill for India. We have been trying to help them. And similarly, there are many countries who would like to help Sri Lanka. But if Sri Lanka goes and sits in China's lap, then then there's a different situation. And uh, so, uh, and the Chinese, you know, all China's friends, you know, they have a very on list of honors: North Korea, Myanmar, uh, 
Pakistan, and what else? You know, those who, who join with them, uh, they don't flourish. Look at their prosperity index. Yeah. But, but Mr. Shilkant, I, I understand your point about Sri Lanka taking on a lot of debt from China, but uh, there are a lot of nations who took debt from China. Uh, and right now, I them. mean, the Look question is... Them. Yes, I, exactly, I agree. But is this an issue of taking Chinese debt which has sunk the economy or is it bad governance? What bad I'm trying to understand today is, is it bad governance? Is it no. iron-fisted governance without trying to take on everyone together on board and economic policies which then just don't make sense beyond a point? Next, next month, they have to give a tranche of, uh, you know, debt re repayment, the, you know, the first tranche. They don't have money for it. Now, what debt? What is the requirement for that? So this crunch on foreign exchange uh, in Sri Lanka has come because of their debt. And how to now deal with this debt. So countries who are going to help them fight, you know, get over this debt problem and their foreign exchange balance of payment will demand certain actions. And for those actions to take place, this present government has no credibility. So there needs to be other interlocutors in Colombo who would uh, give assurance and confidence to the creditors mm. that they will cope with the problem. So the, the need of the hour is to ha either have a technocratic government or like in some cases it happens uh, or, you know, they should, they have to find out some solution which should be Sri Lankan, uh, uh, you know, determined. Yes. That, uh, that, there is, that, that Colombo at least have, has a government which means business. Then the others can come and help. Well, a government but that still has credibility. Uh, Madhuri, internally, what are the kind of solutions that are being talked about? Um, for, uh, the, for the prime minister position, we are not quite sure. Uh, but what I can say is, uh, in these peaceful protests, BASL, which is the Bar Association of Sri Lanka, has played a vital role. So right now, president, uh, prime minister, and the other um, parties has accepted what BASL has presented with them, whatever the suggestions that uh, the protesters are doing. So uh, they are looking at an interim government. So um, who's going to be the next president? I'm not quite sure. There has been a few names that's been suggested for the prime minister position. Um, so on the protesters' side, uh, this is the organization that is representing our opinions. So we are hopeful that since the president is moving ahead with these uh, suggestions, we'll see some positive differences in the government uh, in the coming days. Uh, but not quite sure what, what, what will happen, actually, because if you look at what happened today yes. uh, and yesterday with the peaceful protest, I'm not quite sure how it will turn out. It's very um, uncertain. So True. Very uncertain times. Yes, Just uh, an update here. Uh, while we're doing this report and this show, uh, the High Commission of India in Colombo has put out a statement saying that uh, they've recently noticed rumors circulating in sections of media and social media that certain political persons and their families have fled from Sri Lanka to India. These are fake and blatantly false reports devoid of any truth or substance. The High Commission strongly denies them. We have to see if the all-powerful Rajapaksas are going to stick around. We've seen ruling MPs' houses being attacked by angry protesters. Michael, as we wrap this conversation, just want to understand there have been fears uh, that Sri Lanka may go the Myanmar way. It's been a thriving democracy, but there are fears that the military might take over. Are these uh, well-founded fears? I mean, I would argue that the way in which the government has responded to this crisis already signifies that uh, democracy is very much in retreat in Sri Lanka. I mean, the fact that only now do you have the prime minister stepping down and still the president has refused to step down and he's, you know, he's used heavy handed tactics to crack down against the protesters. But indeed, getting to your question, unfortunately, we cannot rule out any possibility. And especially if the protests are, to, are become increasingly violent and if the president 
continues to refuse to step down, that's where indeed you, you, I think that the possibility of the military uh, stepping in using the the pretext of the need to restore public order or something something like that, we can't rule out that scenario. I don't think we're there yet, but it certainly cannot be ruled out. Um, you know, if the current trajectory continues to play out, uh, and 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 indeed, if the president refuses to accede to the public will and accede to uh, to what the, the 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 protesters want him to do, and that is to resign. So indeed, it's a very troubling state of affairs, um, both politically and economically in Sri Lanka right now. Well, you're seeing those posters of Go Home Gota. Uh, maybe it's time for the Rajapaksa brothers uh, to give their political uh, stranglehold on Sri Lanka a break and give that nation time to heal. Thank you so much to all of you for joining us on this uh, big story that we're tracking tonight. We're taking a very short break, but don't go away. On the other side, we're talking about an issue that really matters. We're a nation that reveres and respects our teachers. So why aren't we paying them? Primary teachers in the national capital have taken to the streets after not getting their salary for nearly five months. What's going on? We're coming back with that story after the break.